Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Peter Truick and I'm a UK-based physiotherapist. Today we'll be discussing how to set up for the bench, how to create tension in all the right places, and finally, towards the end, we'll be going over how to bulletproof your shoulders and the importance of scapula and shoulder stability in the bench press. So starting off, the most common question is how far should I put my hands apart? Now, that is a personal preference. I would say you don't want to go too close and, and get the triceps over firing. You don't want to go too wide where your shoulders flare out and then you start going into internal rotation at the bottom of the rep. Start off with some press ups. Find a comfortable position for you. And once you've got that comfortable position, try and remember it, take it to the bar and see how it feels. But don't worry if you need to move a little bit wider or a bit narrower, that's perfectly fine. You'll find what's comfortable for you. Now bars do have markers. I wouldn't necessarily jump too straight to those because everyone has slightly different anatomy. So don't be too focused on the markers on the bar, but you can use them once you've got your ideal grip. So what I recommend doing is lying down firstly and positioning the bar above your eyes. Now what that will allow you to do is have a free bar path without knocking the racks. And if you go too far back as you press up, you're going to knock the racks and that's not what we want. So we want to be directly under and I would also advise pulling it to the front of the, of the racks. You don't want it at the back. And then from there, eyes underneath it, directly underneath it. And now the next part is gonna be create tension in the body. Now, we want our upper back locked in, we want our lats activated, we want some tension through our core, and then we want tension through our quads. So starting off with the lats and upper back, so pull your shoulders back, you can even inch them down, but really important to pull them right down, engaging, engaging the lats. From there, what I recommend doing is arching the spine, doesn't have to be a crazy arch like you see online and on some power lifters, but just a decent size arch will do. As long as your chest fibers are higher than your deltoid fibers, what we don't want to be is in that position there where your deltoids are higher than your chest. So lock that in, squeeze your shoulder blades back and down, then pop your hands onto the bar in a comfortable position. And from there, you can inch your feet back. So quad tension and leg drive is really important for a good bench press, and that'll also help determine your bar path. So what you don't want is your feet in front of your knees, because what can happen there is you just slide. Now we're not gonna be sliding around as we're benching, we wanna be nice and stable. So pull your feet behind. If you've got really good ankle mobility, you can have your feet flat, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would say find a place that feels locked in. If it's flat feet for you, that's perfectly fine. If it's up on your toes, that's fine. But when you get it, you'll feel the tension in the quads and you will feel locked in. So for example, so we lock the upper back in, engage the lats. You can actually pull the bar down into the racks if you like. I quite like doing that just to make sure my lats are engaged. And then putting that arch in the spine, driving through the legs, I've got tension in my quads, and from there raising the bar up. So with that tension in your lats, this is what's gonna determine the J shape in your bar path. And when the bar comes down, you want it to be touching your sternum and pressing up. Another good key is to keep your head flat back on the bench because what happens when you pull your head up, you get that position there so you lose all the tension in the upper back, which is not what we want. So we want to keep that tension, keep that leg drive and press up. And if your lats are engaged properly, the bar path will come. We don't want a straight up and down bar path. We want a nice J curve and the bar path to mirror that J curve on the way down. The thing that determines that most of all is your lats. I would not be trying to do that consciously. Don't try and make the J curve. Having your lats engaged will do that for you. Now we'll be going over some shoulder stability exercises. So this video is not for injuries. This is for injury prevention. So I'd recommend doing all these exercises as a warm up to engage your shoulder stabilizers. And we're going to go a bit over understanding the movements of the scapula. So one of the most common injuries we see in clinic is anterior shoulder pain when it comes to the bench press. The way in which we get rid of that is by stabilizing the shoulder and getting those muscles firing and most of the time it's not a weakness, they just don't activate. So when we sit at our desks all day we have rounded shoulders, bad posture and what that means is you get that forward tilt of the shoulder blade which can also lead to a bit of, oh, it used to be called impingement, but we don't do that anymore. We don't call it an impingement because we know based on evidence that it's not actually truly impinging. So we're looking at the overall mechanics. 
So the way in which we start our stabilization process of the shoulder is with the physio's favorite tool, just a simple band. Now it doesn't need to be a very heavy band as we're not looking to strengthen, we're looking to wake these muscles up. The best thing to do is get your bench press or press up position with your arms. And we're gonna be specific to this exercise. So what you wanna do, you wanna get that angle where you feel comfortable in a, in a press up or on the bench and mimic that angle. Now, if you want, you can put a foam roller or a towel or anything in there to lock that out. But I suggest if you haven't got an injury, one of the best ways to do it is actually try and stabilize the arm yourself. So from there, you wanna be in that position, locked in and rotating backwards. And that's all you're gonna do. Try keep your elbow as still as you can and we're just rotating back. The lighter the band, possibly the better for this sort of exercise. Another good exercise to start in your warm-up is just a simple banded pull apart. Now you can do it in what they call a banded T or a scapular T, pulling the band apart, making a T shape with your body. But I actually recommend is getting a slight lact activation by reaching up, opening up the palms so you don't want your hands facing down. We want our shoulders in that externally rotated position and from there pulling the band down towards your sternum. And this is just gonna wake up all the muscles that surround your shoulder blade and posterior shoulder. For the next exercise, I have to give a shout out to Jo Gibson. She's a UK based physiotherapist who has done a lot of research and training on the shoulders. Now what this does is we're gonna loop it round the back so it hooks under your shoulder blade and facilitates your shoulder blade movement into that rounded position. So once it's looped under your shoulder blade like that, you wanna wrap it over the top and come up almost like your thumbs pointing up. Do that on both hands. And from there, we're actually gonna use what we call musculature slings. So if we engage the left glute, that can improve the performance of the right shoulder and vice versa. And from there, we're gonna go into a lunge, which also increases our thoracic extension like we're gonna need for the bench press. So in that thoracic extended position, we're gonna lunge forward and press up at the same time. And you can do that alternating. If you have a one-sided shoulder instability issue, you can do it just on that side a few more reps, but I would highly recommend doing both in order to warm up efficiently for the bench press. Right, the next thing we're gonna do is create a bit of instability for the shoulder. So there's a couple of options here. If you're really unstable and your shoulder shakes all over the place, you can just go pressing in and rolling the ball around. But what I recommend, if you're a lifter, if you're wanting to optimize your bench press, go up against the wall and tap the ball and push it quite hard. So you want to be pushing it hard so it's pushing back into your shoulder, creating that instability. And you can move around the wall too if you like. You can swap hands. Sorry about the racket, but that is a really top tier exercise. Now, if you're pushing really heavy weights and you do struggle a bit with a shoulder niggle, but it's not quite bad enough to worry about doing rehab or anything like that, but if you do have a niggle, I recommend you do the rehab. But another great one is to loop this in the front of your shoulder and put some good tension on a heavy band and almost get the band pulling your shoulder back and up. And from there, you can actually go through your shoulder range of movement into what we call flexion. So forward range, again, thumb facing up. We wanna be in external rotation. This is slightly at the wrong angle for me. So I'd probably turn about there and just work it up. And that can be a really nice exercise to free up your shoulder. You can also have it pulling straight back if you like, if that feels a bit more comfortable. The next part of the warm up is gonna to be to bench press, but not in the way you think. So what I recommend doing again, the physio band, you might as well put one of these in your gym bag at this point, but get into that bench press position, lock everything in, lock the core, lock the legs, lock the upper back. And then we're gonna do an inverted or reverse bench press and pull the band apart as you go down. So from there, pull the band outwards and go down into your bench press position. And this is a great exercise to get all those posterior shoulder muscles engaged. And lastly, but not least, the physio favorite inverted kettlebell press. So go through your process again. I wouldn't advise putting a heavier kettlebell on the floor and lifting it up from the floor, but this is a lightweight one, so I'm not too worried. So go through your process, lock everything in place. And that's why, because we don't want to load into too much internal rotation in that position, rather leave it on your chest or get someone to pass it to you. So lock everything in place and you're going to hold the kettlebell upside down. Now for this, you want some shaking. I mean, this one's probably a bit easy, but ideally I'll try and mimic it. You want the kettlebell to be doing that on your way down 
and the muscles in the back of the shoulder stabilizing the joint. If it's not shaking, either you've got really elite shoulder stability or you just need a heavier kettlebell, which is this case, because I know I don't have elite shoulder stability. But the key thing there is that that really also engages your core. Don't do it both kettlebells at the same time or both sides at the same time. Do it one-sided because that'll really challenge your core and wake your core up. So why is this part of the video really important and I highly recommend doing it? It comes down to imbalances. Everyone loves pushing heavy on the bench, everyone loves rowing, but not many people love training the rotator cuff. So your stabilizers of the shoulder, if you don't have them trained, they sit basically behind your pecs on your shoulder blade and in that region. And if you have too much dominance from one side and not enough from the other, you get that imbalance and then you get mechanical deficits, which can lead to injury or lead to niggles or even just a weaker arm. Sometimes you'll see people where pushing a dumbbell, one arm flies up and the other one just doesn't want to go. And sometimes that can even be the dominant hand. So it might be a weakness, fair enough, but most of the time it's an imbalance or instability issue in the shoulder. And that is why I highly recommend doing these exercises. So what accessory exercises can you do in the gym to help your shoulder stability? Now, all your rows are gonna be great, but one that I highly recommend adding into your workout is a cable straight arm pull down, or if you prefer your body weight sort of thing, you can do your front lever or tuck front lever or any variation of a front lever that you like. Straight arm scapular strength is one of the most underrated things that can give you a lot of strength in a lot of different exercises. For instance, the deadlift and the bench press. It doesn't play too much role in the squat, but it can definitely help with the other two lifts. To increase your bench with your gym workout is actually training your shoulders. Now, I know this might sound contraindicated to what we said earlier, but your deltoid fibers definitely help in the bench press. Your body uses all its resources in order to achieve the movement from A to B. So definitely train your delts. The stronger your delts are, the less likely you are to get stuck at the bottom of the rep. If you'd like a tutorial on any other lift or any other exercise, please drop a comment down in the comment section below and smash that like button. And hopefully one of these days I'll learn that subscription from you. Thank you very much for watching and stick around for the next one.